to give you kind of a preview on stacking the kill. These shapes that are just like brick, that is, they are just um, a, a shape like this haven't been carved, they're the brick shape. If you are in a kill and you want to stack this kill, there's no, no, this, these don't have glue, they're called bisque wire, B-I-S-Q-U-E. That means the first spiring, it's just to make the clay permanent. Now when you get into pottery and stuff, you'd want to do a glaze firing. That's a whole different process. But I don't want to talk any more about that because I'm not, we're not going to have any glaze around that. They're not going to stick to one another. Therefore, I can stack these things up as long as I've got them. But what I would do is stack them like this. The next, next one, I stack like that. I fill that kill full. Leave, leave an air circulation between things. Even the bottom of it would have a circulation because I'd raise the, the, the shelf. They're called kill furniture and kill shelves. They're pieces of fired um, brick, high fired, so they won't melt or anything and they'll hold up the brick. You can do that. The reason you want to is to raise that bottom brick up and get some air in under it. It's of course going to be heated. But you can see that it would just, you could just go on and on and on. You can stack those things until the cows come home. Now you can't stack things that have been carved. These are the end feathers out on the, the one end of the other, one feather that have been carved and they're tending to starting to dry out. They're just sitting back there. Um, but you see that you couldn't, you wouldn't want to set another brick up on there. These are kind of fragile. Now they'll be all right unless somebody grabs a hold of them, drops them, puts something on them, scoots something into them. If you, by chance, you got up to the top of the kill and you wanted to, and you're real careful. If you wanted to fire that brick and set it in with just the plain bricks and you don't want to break those things off, is I would probably stack it with those maybe sticking over the edge. Uh, that kind of tempting there. I don't want to uh, booger booger something up. If I set that down there like this, that could stick over just a little bit enough to snap that off just by the weight of it. So I would consider waiting till the top, maybe the top run of brick. Then I'd just set it over on there like that. Now there's nothing touching it and I've got no worries there. But you you use these, lots of them, then Put your carved stuff on top. You have to consider the shape of it. If something doesn't stick out over the edge, you could set it like this. But the least little thing, if it bows out there, like that one right there is bowed out there just a little bit, it just the sheer weight of more on top of it could snap that thing. It would snap just like that. Because they break, they, it would break just like eggs. The, the drier that thing is, and you must get it dry, and the, the trick word is bone dry. It's not just semi-dry or oh, it looks dry to me. That's not the way you determine. You determine, you can by feel. It, the, the, the brick is, is in here with a piece of wood. That brick and the wood, when it's dry, will feel the same temperature. That one feels the same as that to me. Maybe a little bit cooler, maybe it's back there in the corner um, before. It's been out here though long enough till it's warmed up. I believe it's completely dry, though all those. When you come to here, there's a, uh, there's a marked 
difference in temperature. That feels icy cold to me, to the back of my hand, um, or back of my fingers. That's kind of the way you test. If you, if you can see a color right there that's a little bit darker, chances are that is a little bit colder. It is. That, it's, I can tell a big difference between those two. This one's real cold. But you want them all just like this piece of wood. If it's got no moisture in it, that shouldn't have any moisture in it because it'll blow up. It will expand. Think what a teapot does. You start heating up water. If you put that in a kill and turn the kill on and just start heating it up like, like your oven at home, that thing would blow up. First off, it would tend to dry the outside of it, and that would make it into a, like a hand grenade. It'd have this hull over it, and the minute you just keep on heating, that would become steam or something in there. It would expand, and it would blow up. I've had them blow up, I know. And one of them blows up. Maybe you're reaching in there to get it when it blows up. <laughs> Who knows? You don't want to do that. They'll blow up when you first put them in the kill. I've had them blow up between 500 and 1,000 degrees. And they blow the elements, the heating elements. You look in there and there's just little wires hanging down in your kill. Um, that's where the explosion blew them out of there. And the stuff seemed just chips. I've had all kind of catastrophes happen. Have a stack of stuff like this. Have it all the way to the top of the kill. Maybe it's 50 brick. And they're up about that in a kill. They don't hold about that much. I've had a, a bottom brick or one of these down here blow up. Then the whole thing topples over. And there's just pieces in there and it's broken. And, and what's really broken is your heart. You peek in there and you see nothing but pieces. Or pieces sticking up at odd angles. And stuff like that. You know something's happened. And it's not good. I'll, I'll be putting these things down in a kill, and I'll be arranging uh, all the the cones, pyrometric cones, and I'll explain that sometime. They are devices to to heat these brick at a specific temperature. I think the temperature is something like uh, uh, 1800 and 55 degrees, but it'll, instead of saying all that, which is a mouthful, I'd probably say cone 07. Now anybody that's using cones and stuff knows that that's approximately 1850 degrees. I keep it in the ballpark, I can guess within a few degrees of something. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, you want to get started right, but uh, one of them is don't rush firing stuff. You can you can look at these and see all these different uh, colored brick. Well, I'm not going to fire that until they're all about the sh shade of that piece of paper there, a little bit darker. Uh, I, these probably could be, these could be fired. These are, are dry enough, bone dry, almost, I would say. Now, I'd probably be on the safe side, I'd wait a day or two. So what are we doing right now? What are we doing? Yeah. We're doing, uh, yeah, we're doing the, the bird in his right wing. Oh, I meant process-wise, what are we actually doing? We're bringing these bricks and we're stacking them on this table we're, for we're, a purpose? We are, uh, yes, because they are dry here better. Yeah, and you can, it looks like you can tell, you know, that these are a lot closer to being dry than that's these. That's right. Those were, those were, the first ones, that were, those were done about a month ago. Mm -hmm. But... And when were these done? Yeah, uh, yesterday. Yesterday?
as I look at these things and it's coming out, of course, it's, it's like a giant puzzle. It looks like it's, it. I, I, I think it would be very difficult to try and just grab these pieces without numbers. Very difficult. And you know, try to actually it, put it together. Say, yeah, because it'll, it'll work that way. You can Especially you can change, if you don't have a picture to go on. <laughs> That's right. And that's uh, important when we get to laying it. I have had on occasion to where I think the brick might blow up. Or there's a good chance of a brick blowing up. Uh, like, for instance, this one here, that's almost a whole brick. That one is there. I have worried about it, thinking, boy, that brick's awful solid. There's a good chance I'm going to have trouble even drying that thing out. But it, it, because they'll turn white and you think it's dry. You feel them I mean, it's still cold. I've taken a, a, a uh, electric drill and taken a, a wood bit, these long jobs and like that, and that big as your thumb, and I drill holes through there. You, and you can do that. If you're thinking, boy, that's such a important brick or something, or it's too thick, it's so thick that it's not going to dry out. See, these things will dry real good, but there's one that's slow drying. It's because it's so thick. That's a brick thick right there. Uh, I put you know, uh, oh, maybe five holes through there. It lets air go through there, and boy, it'll dry out better. I haven't done any of that here. I'm just going to make sure I dry them for a longer time. If I had to rush it, that's what I'd do. It. If, they, if I had to say, I've got to lay that in the wall, I can't wait that long, I would drill holes through it. Well, I mean, but, you look you look at some of these pieces here, like, okay, for example, this one over here, it's almost the same as a half brick, and it's got just a little bit of carving in it, but it's very subtle. You know, it's, it's hard yeah. to compare something like that to, say, like, something like this, or, you know, something that's got a mm -hmm. lot of definition, something that extrudes out, you know, a lot. Yeah. I'm kind of curious how it's going to look all together. Because you look yeah. at this and it's like, man, that would be kind of hard to put together. Yeah. You know, you you can kind of I look at... I don't know if those numbers were on the back. I think it. I think it's possible. It's just it would take some time. Yes, it would. Like, you know, you could... It's kind of like doing a jigsaw puzzle where you put your colors in their own piles and stuff. Yeah, that's well, right. Well, I could look and I could say, well, this and this and this yeah, and, that, and, and this others, and that. Yeah. And they, these probably go oh, together. Oh, my. And then you Here's can right here for you, where it gets you. Yeah. Or that long from here? Those are kind of like the hard yeah. pieces in a jigsaw yeah. puzzle where uh, there's a bunch of colors really together, a person, people's faces, and things like that. Sky detail. and it's just all blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> detail and stuff. Yeah. You know, like I can, I can look at this one and tell that it goes close to here and close to here because these are all claws. Okay, so what's our next yes. step? We need to count bricks? Yes, we do. Okay. We need to count. Let's start out with these these just little doozies. Um, Let me, uh, now this one, I, I'm i kind of curious uh, if you want to come over here and look and see. This one is marked as extra. Extra, because it's, it's thin. It's thin. It's so, the if we actually look at it, it, but, uh, it, it compares. It doesn't have to. It would see set up from the back side. So you're saying that it when would, the uh, mason puts it in the wall, and he's back behind, he's got room to slide it right. out so that you get a flush Surfers. surface. Okay. Yeah, and the back of it, who cares? Mm -hmm. It's back in the wall. Okay. But uh, we only use it if we have to. Okay. I wasn't gonna. Eat do is a first class brick because it's thin. Mm -hmm. It might crack in two. Who knows? Uh, I hate to throw it away. Okay. So we won't count that one as part of our count, right? 
Since it says extra on it? Uh, that's right. Magic number is 187 whole bricks. All right, that's, that gives us enough to And we just make sure we take nine of those away and chop them in half. That's right. Clear as mud? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. We had a brick here. All right. That wire is right here. Let's just see what you do. So we're going to put this in here. And I yeah. think you want Is it okay to. if it shaves it? Yeah. When you put it in? It's all right. Okay. It's just shaved off a high spot. Okay. This one to make sure. Force it in. Yep. You need to force it all the way? This is uh, the full length. Uh, yeah, you better. Uh, you better. Okay. Because you're going to start it out there okay. and that kind of gives you a guide. Oh, uh, okay. It keeps it a little down longer. Down okay. Yeah. Now, what you want to do. Is make sure that that is down on there. Mm -hmm. I'll let you show yeah. me first with this one. If, if it's up in here or something, it'll just cut down mm -hmm. and then out. But uh, I believe I would do something like that and then kind of pull it and it'll well, Why don't you uh, demonstrate and show me how you okay. would go about and do something And then like this. just pull straight. Don't let them up like that. It'll do you want to pull down or do you want to no, try to I pull straight? I just with... a little bit down. A little down, but okay. Now tighten that thing up and say it just a tad. Okay. There we go. Let's and see how There you go. Did. You got it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Now it did more hooked up a little bit, but that's quite all right. And it doesn't and matter. What's interesting is looking, actually looking at this pattern here. Yeah, it's how, neat, isn't it? How, from the pulling. It looks like a wheel is going. <laughs> a flat tire is going to soon be flat. Uh, now, I uh, Do you normally you know, do something with, uh, yeah, here, here with this? I think you can dare and pull up. Now, that one was extra tight. But mm -hmm. And then you probably want to pull out so you don't yeah. over up the edge. That's so now you're doing some smoothing, right? Yep. The reason I'm smoothing this is I want a smooth background. I don't want a rough. I've, if you've noticed, these, uh, uh, well, the brick's not, no, this one here. Here's an example. The, the, when the brick comes to the, around the edge, it's, it's going to be rough. I left it rough. It'll stand out from a slick background. But I can do these fairly fast and it So you do the uh, edges or the sides as well? Right. Like these sides? No. No, okay. That's just more. Oh, this works fine. I don't have to cut any off. <clears throat> it's just enough on there to fill in the low places and stuff. I know I don't, I don't mind if there's a little indentation <clears throat> or something, as long as it's smooth. Mm -hmm. 